obviously really uh, looking forward to getting a chance to uh, to head up to Philadelphia here uh, this afternoon after practice and uh, get a chance to compete. It's been certainly a, a long time since we've been able to get on the court and been a very um, up and down 20 something days, 30 days, however long it's been in terms of uh, every day. It's been something different and uh, the group of young men that we'll be taking up there are certainly excited about uh, the opportunity to compete again. So. Um, you know, we're we're going. You know, this season's all about uh, not only a season of sacrifice, but also a season of I think uh, passion for what you do. And uh, our young men are, have been, and as well as our coaching staff, have been really excited about getting the opportunity to to play again. And uh, it looks like we're going to have that opportunity tomorrow. I'll take questions now. Uh, can you kind of give us a glimpse on how maybe difficult or challenging or how crazy these last 24, 25 days have been for you and your team? Yeah, Keith, you know, it's, um, you know, I've said this before. I think Coach Wright said it at Villanova. You know, as coaches, you, you're, in the, you're in this thing long enough, you have, you know, notes from a year's past or practice plans from years past or, you know, either guys, friends that have gone through stuff from years past. and. There's no book on this. There, there, there's no going back and look at, you know, what happened when we didn't have 30 days of practice due to a pandemic? Uh, there's none of that. And um, the, the dichotomy from where teams are at right now is just unbelievable. Like, you know, I, I was talking to a buddy of mine that's coaching his team and is looking to put, you know, once it needs a week off his bye week so he can start getting rest and putting in tweaks to, so, to finish the season. And, you know, we're, we're looking to get on the practice floor to remember our plays that we put in this season. So it's just the, the differences on these teams is, I think more so than anything I've ever seen, even more so like, you know, I think the NFL got through it, college football got through it, the NBA was in the bubble. I think this dynamic with college basketball is really, really different. And uh, I'm not, I, I know for sure it is from talking to other people that have either been paused or haven't played games versus those who have played a lot of games. So uh, we're just excited to, to get a chance to get back at it. John, how much of the last couple of days getting back to practice been essentially starting over? Uh, yeah, it's interesting. You're, you're balancing, uh, you know, the fact that you're not going to get in shape in two days, but or back in shape, but you're kind of balancing. Okay, prep because you got to prep for a team you play on Thursday, with going over the things that you already have in, and then deciding the things you're just not going to even get to. So that that's been that's kind of probably been the balancing act. Coach, obviously not the the easiest start to the to the season, not only because of this break, but because of the early results. Um, how important is it to get off on a good foot tomorrow, whether that's a win or just playing up to your standards? What what exactly are you looking for out of tomorrow? Well, you know, I'm I'm looking for a group that comes in and plays exactly to our standards and to the standards of Cincinnati basketball that we, of which we've set, and certainly representing that and uh, you know our core values. So that's my focus. Uh, yeah, I don't think. Uh, you know, one of the things I have found out from schools that have come back is, you know, I don't, I don't expect us to, you know, necessarily be in flow or, or you know, be in rhythm. Basketball is a rhythm sport, so I, I mean, I expect us to come in and play hard. Coach, I know you can't give too much specifics, but what can you tell us about player availability you've had in practice of late, and, and maybe what you're looking at for Thursday? Um, we were able to go five on five yesterday. Um, and then we'll be able to uh, hopefully go five on five today, and uh, we will not have a full roster. Uh, uh, one of our GAs is—I put him on the floor as a coach uh, this week due to due to some coaches being out, and main, main, mainly in part because he can play five on five and get him down the court with us. So we were able to go five on five. That, that probably gives you an idea. How many more games uh, do you see you guys playing this season? Well, you know, I think, you know, John Cunningham put it best when he said, you know, COVID will decide that. We won't. And I think that's what people got to understand. I, you know, we, we, you know, we didn't shut down the six games. COVID did. I mean, trust me. When, when, you, have, when you have, you know, more people in a, in a dorm room, individual dorm rooms than you do on the basketball court, um, that's, that's not what you want. So uh, COVID will determine how many more games we play. I hope I don't put you in a tough spot with this next question, but 
given who your opponent is tomorrow, I was wondering if I could ask you to kind of speak on John Cheney and, and your thoughts on him and his impact on the game. No, I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, you know, I, I, I've been in this profession 25 plus years and I had the honor and certainly uh, uh, the results weren't great, but I was in the A-10 when, uh, when, we, when, when Coach Cheney was at Temple. And I'll never forget, there was once, we were playing Temple at Temple and uh, I think it had Marty Collins, I think they had some, you know, obviously great guard, long athletic guards, and just you know, the one three one. It had so many different looks, and uh, it was just it was it was really hard to play Temple, in in in, in large part because Chain and his system and, and, and the way he coached and how he got the most out of his players. But I think Keith and he had six hundred ninety nine wins. We go to Temple. I'm at St Bonaventure. We don't have many wins. So I'm thinking, uh oh. So the game all of a sudden becomes a nationally televised game. I don't think it originally was. So we were in the locker room, and, 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 and we start to walk out for warm-ups. And I don't, know, I don't remember who the commissioner was at that point. Uh, I remember being a, a woman, and I remember her walking up and saying, Coach, you know, I was an assistant, Coach, good luck. And she had on temple colors. And I thought, oh, boy, we're in trouble tonight. Not only are we playing one of the most legendary coaches of all time for a 7th of this win, and they got balloons. You could see, you could see the balloons and like the paper the wrapping up above the ceiling. You know what I mean? And I'll be darned if that thing didn't. The buzzer went off, and it was they could have they could have dropped those balloons 15 minutes into the game probably because I think we were out of it by that point. And uh, Coach Cheney, you know, he had a he had a just a, a, a smile that could light up a room, and uh, was always very gracious with his time to to coaches and fans. Uh, and uh, I'll never forget. He was smiling ear to ear, going through that, going through that line. And you know, for me, just being a young assistant was an it was an honor to to get a chance to say you're on the same floor as him. And uh, I get to say I was the losing, I was a part of the losing team for his 700th. Coach, what the numbers situation? Um, do you expect any walk-ons playing tomorrow? I do. Um, who you know? You know we haven't seen them play a ton, and you know who should we watch out for, and, and kind of what do you have there? Um, yeah, I'd love to tell you that, but I've already told you enough, and sure you're not the only one watching this news conference right now. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll. I would expect some walk-ons to play. Coach, in addition to all the challenges you've gone through the past couple of weeks, you now have three road games in, in eight days with the Temple game being in Philadelphia. Can you speak on that challenge on top of what you're coming out of? No, I mean, it's, you know, it's big picture. That's right. You know, right now we're just focusing on, you know, the challenges we have ahead of us, you know, that we've gone through. We have physical, mental, and emotional challenges. And uh, our goal right now is to go and compete against Temple. And, you know, they'll, they'll, that, 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 that's where our focus is at. Coach, can you, you talk about the concern you have for not playing in 25 days for uh, the, the rust factor uh, for your team? Well, I, that's why I said kind of at the beginning, we're not, you know, I don't expect to be in great rhythm, um, but I do expect our guys to play hard and compete. Do you anticipate player availability roster changing at all over this next upcoming stretch? Yeah, just I, it's one thing I haven't been able to predict. Uh, I, I just, I've, if you asked me that throughout this process, I would have got it wrong every time. So. Uh, it's uh, there's no way to know. Anything else? I'm just curious. Um, kind of, I know a lot of the football players probably think they can play basketball. Uh, UC has had football players play basketball before. Is that an option you explored at any point? Uh, it is not. Um, uh, you know, I played at Marshall and Randy Moss and Chad Pennington were there, so I know for a fact that all football players like to play basketball, including Keith Jenkins. Thanks, guys.